Well, hi everyone. I guess I'm live. Um, welcome to JC's Rip Track. The uh, this is my first official live stream. Although I had a chance to do it last week, just on a, on a, on a test. And amazingly enough, maybe it was the time of night or what have you. But everybody showed up. First thing I want to check. Uh, now I I have um, uh, the hey Joe, you're on. The, uh, I, w I wasn't sure if you were going to be able to make it, but there's my moderator. So, um, UK's here. We, uh, and, uh, we have Robin from, from Switzerland, uh, from Switzerland. Um, so we're, we're, we're certainly all, uh, we're all in, uh, all in place, but, uh, again, welcome. Uh, I guess if you're looking for tips and advice on how to get the most out of your, uh, modeling projects, the, well, here we are. So I, I guess what I wanted to do is, is start off uh, today just a little bit of background. Uh, first off, I've not done live streams aside from last week's test, so please uh, allow for for some of my uh, my hiccups on the way, uh, where I may uh, be having uh, having people kind of join and pop in and pop out. This certainly will not be nearly as active, I think. As as say uh, either Ron's trains and things or or Steve Brown's with uh, it's it's my railroad, uh, but at the same time you got to start somewhere. So anyway, this is just uh, partly it's a live chat. It's um, in many respects this is almost the substitute for my video this week. Just simply with all, all the things going on around uh, the season and and holidays and the like, uh, it makes it difficult to actually produce and edit a video. In in fact, my in laws are arriving at the airport right now and uh, they won't be arriving so, like, like they won't be coming through this door uh, until later today so this is my window this is why I scheduled it at the time that I did because uh, normally this would be probably better in the evening I'm curious curious in terms of timing I know that um, a few have said that they can't make it just simply because of the time. However, this does work for those of you who are uh, east of the Atlantic. So uh, glad to have you here. Um, so can everybody hear me? I've been rambling on. Uh, can every uh, for those of you who are in chat? Can you just say that you uh, that you hear me? Or if you can't, and I'm just sitting here waving my hands, can you hear me? Oh, good. By the way, here's my official Ron's Trains and Things mug to give uh, credit where credit is due. Ron can't be with us today, um, but uh, the and uh, just as a secret, this isn't coffee. Uh, it's just water. Um, I like my caffeine cold and fizzy. Good. So um, uh, last time when I when I did the test on this, uh, my voice came out as a higher pitch than what it actually is uh, and I figured that was because the microphone um, the unit right here uh, it was mismatched with the uh, with what it was broadcasting at so hopefully that is uh, there Irish train guy welcome Mike Becker good to, good to, uh, good to have you here uh, so just as I, Let's go back to a, a bit of background. Uh, you might have there was a little bit of a pattern with the last uh, two videos that that I've done, uh, that when um, uh, when we're in um, shopping for Christmas or holiday gifts, whatever um, in in whatever mode. There's a, a neat little motto that we use around the house, is that you get something, uh, you ask for something you want. Or you get something you want, something you need, something to wear, and something to read. Now, sometimes these can be acro across the way. So, something you need was the essential tools that I that I did uh, that I did um, three weeks ago. The something you want would be the airbrush video that I did two weeks ago, and then of course last week was just simply the blooper reel. And I suppose I wear that. Um, but part of today's recommendations is also items to um, uh, items to read, and that's part of the part of the discussion today. Now, of course, I want to do a, a general uh, Q and A. Um, BNSF and N Scale, welcome. Um, 
the uh, it's good good to see everybody kind of kind of checking in. Uh, so I, I guess what I what I wanted to uh, to do is before we get started, were there any kind of uh, questions that you had right off the hop that you're kind of hoping that I will eventually answer in some of my videos? Um, and I am going to oh touch the brush welcome and I'm just going to put this over uh, show some of the live chat and uh, we can uh, we can kind of go from here now the uh, so now uh, Robin you had you had a uh, had a question did you want to did you want to put your question up because I, I I know that you that you had one. Or a few, I suppose. Um, and uh, in in the mean in the meantime, I'm just going to kind of queue up uh, queue up a few things while while we're at it. Okay, so um, now I, the uh, Robin and I had actually ta uh, talked offline for a little bit. Is is that uh, you were having trouble with general washes and and general washes as opposed to pin washes are ones that you do over the entire over the entire model. Um, where can you find, where can you find India ink, uh, India ink? Um, <laughs> yes. And, and, and future floor polish. And in fact, there is an entire web page out there called the complete future. And it is a web page that describes everything that you can do with future floor polish in relation to modeling. Uh, it's a fabulous web page. I, I don't currently have it in in the links below. I've got other things down there, but I really should uh, edit that and and put that uh, put that in there. In fact, I'm gonna leave a note. Uh, complete future as a reminder that I'm that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to do that. Uh, now, um, so I guess general washes like uh, India ink alcohol seems to be a, a, a good uh, something that, that that people use um, one of the things that I often use are uh, pre-made washes and you would think that I actually knew that this question was coming coming up but uh, it, it did come up offline uh, this is uh, just an example of a pre-made wash um, now games workshop refers to these as shades uh, but Vallejo and uh, a couple of other companies actually actually make uh, pre-made, and these are acrylic washes. These are not uh, they're they're not oil washes. Um, and the thing is, you can make a general wash out of oils in the same way that you saw me uh, use it on uh, in the pin wash video, except you apply it over the whole model. But that does require a lot of uh, a lot of removal. Whereas these acrylic mo uh, these acrylic washes are often used for um, uh, just with uh, painting, usually miniatures, but uh, you know, science fiction miniatures and, and the like. But they are they are very effective. <coughs> One of the challenges of doing a, doing a general wash is how it looks when you apply it versus how it looks when it dries are two different things, um, and that's the real test as to how well a wash actually uh, actually actually um works so see you later joe i mean he was my uh he was my moderator um but uh i've i've got a little note here that says point this way for chat um it's it's mirror image to to what i'm uh, to what i'm working on uh in fact if i rearrange the uh, rearrange the windows a little bit i might be able to do this a little bit better with it without it looking quite so uh quite so awkward um Painting an undecorated. Okay, um, the Bill. I'm going to get to your question. Your question in just in just a second. I, I just want to kind of follow up on on uh, on the question with with washes. And uh, the one thing about using um, general washes over models. Yes, you can use oils. Uh, and the same process applies is that, is that instead of applying it as a pin wash, you can use a larger brush and slop it over uh, slop it over the model. But that does require a lot of feathering and cleaning uh, afterwards. Um, your alternative is to either make it out of something like India ink and um, touch of the brush. You asked about where you can get India ink. Uh, depends on on where you are. I mean, here uh, in 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 North America. 
um, uh, craft and art stores often uh, sell inks. And in fact, I actually found a gray ink yesterday. Now, I didn't buy it, but I thought, uh, particularly for what Robin is trying to do with, he, he's doing Union Pacific uh, cars that are fairly clean, but still you can see the, the panel lines and, and, and the like. And using uh, a gray ink um, as a possibility. Um, but yes, Michael's. Oh, hi, Eric. Eric, can I make you a moderator? The, uh, there we are. I'm just going to make you a moderator right there. So, um, cause he's, he's done this kind of thing before. So, uh, but yes, Mike, uh, Michael's is, uh, is certain in North America. Michael's is, is a good place to do it. Art supply stores, uh, do have, uh, do have ink. It was actually at Michael's yesterday that I found the gray ink that I thought I'm, I'm going to definitely pick that up. So, uh, welcome, welcome, Eric. Um, and touch of the brush. Have I weathered a steam locomotive? The truthful answer is not yet. Uh, but I think I, I may. The trouble is, I I model modern, and most of the people that uh, that I have done stuff for have uh, have done modern. But at the same time, here in Calgary, we have a full size steam locomotive. Uh, actually, three of them in in uh, at Heritage Park that. Uh, I've been wanting to get a chance to to actually do some weathering with with a with a steam locomotive because it's it's kind of a different animal. Some of the principles are basically the same, and you know, with and going back to the weathering black video. Um, okay, you're going to pick up the kids, Eric. Well, moderate as uh, as uh, certainly as as you can. I mean, uh, I don't think that this is going to be nearly as onerous as say doing uh, Ron or Steve's cha uh, Steve's channel at this point in time. Um, The, uh, um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I hope to be able to do, uh, to do a steam, a steam locomotive soon. Um, but it's just, it's just a matter of opportunity. I mean, I, I do take commissions. I haven't had a lot. Uh, I haven't really had a lot of them, but all those HO scale cars that you saw in the introductory videos, that, that was actually a commission. And, um, uh, the, there you go. Thank you very much, Eric, for that link. Um, you can you can see that down there. Uh, that's a, a place for the uh, uh, for the India ink. Now, here's an interesting thing. There is a mix that you can use India ink and Future, um, and it's referred to as Magic Wash. It's India ink, Future, and 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 water. I can't remember quite the the ratio, uh, but it really does work well when you're working like I've used it as a, as a wash on really tiny fit the 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 really tiny figures to kind of bring out the detail with that I haven't tried them on on cars but uh it's referred to as magic wash um because it, it does really seep into the cracks and and leaves it pulls a lot of that pigment in there and doesn't leave it on on the main on the main surface so Yes, please, uh, please do hit like, um, uh, and greatly, greatly appreciated for that. So, uh, and and the other, of course, the other option is you can do the homemade options with with India Ink and 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 Future. And one of Robin's issues is he hasn't been able to find uh, Future floor uh, floor polish. But uh, another option, of course, is these. Um, the, these these pre-made uh, acrylic washes. Uh, this one is from Games Workshop. The difficulty is you pay more for less, um, but they do work. Uh, one of the things that I like about the Games Workshop washes is that when you slop them on, when they dry, they look like as if you, um, they tend to dry the way that they look when you apply them, um, which that's one of the big challenges with washes is that you can get something that looks great when you're applying it wet. And then when you, when you let it dry, it doesn't look very good at all. Um, Okay, so uh, it was the um, the 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 wave the wave kind paint. I th I, I tend to prefer. I think that's I, I refer to those as as as, uh, as tide uh, tide marks. But yeah, I know I know what you mean. I, I actually had a similar issue with with something else with something I did not that long ago. Um, but uh, but the India. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Future is now a ple a pledge revive revive it. It really depends on where you are because it bears a different name in in France, in Germany, 
I think it's called Johnson's Clear in the UK. Um, here in Canada, I think it's still um, it's Pledge with Future now. Um, the 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 company that manufactures it, but it's essentially it's clear acrylic wax, um, and uh, so, uh, some use it now. There there are some uh, some those in the military modelers who are very much a sticklers of don't uh, don't use future for X Y or Z uh, reasons, and uh, some of that has to do with. Um, uh, I, I think it's still untested as to how, how long it takes if it, if it yellows. So, okay, thank you very much, Touch for the Brush. And uh, the uh, the recommendations are coming up, but uh, have, uh, have a good time at work. Um, there we are, Eric, thank you very much. Again, the, the, um, the, links, uh, the links there. Um, just just keep keep working with that. I think what we need to do is for Robin in Switzerland is is he doesn't have access is, has the product names are different, and I, th I think we have to kind of kind of figure that out. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna try and work with that. Um, so anyway, um, but with the acrylic washes, the only thing that you have to be careful of when you apply the acrylic washes is that you have to make sure that after you apply it, that there will be a place where it kind of pools on lower parts of the model. Um, you need to take a, a brush that is dry, uh, not a dry brush, but a brush that is dry, and just simply dab dab it there and wick up that extra moisture, wipe it off, and just keep keep doing that because you don't want big, thick pools of, uh, of it. Um, cause then that doesn't look realistic either, but at the same, at the, so it's trying to get that even, that kind of even coat. Um, I'm not sure if that necessarily answers your question, Robin, if, if that is, um, or, you know, we, we can certainly, uh, certainly talk, talk some more, uh, on that. Um, now I did think, uh, was there another, um, just checking, checking on some of the, some of the questions going, uh, going uh, a little, a little further back up with, uh, with chat. Um, that, uh, yeah, just, uh, just also, also with touch of the brushes uh, question. Yes. I would, uh, just reiterating, I would love to be able to uh, get a chance to um, weather a steam locomotive. Uh, there's a couple possibilities with, with my local club that I may be able to do. And, um, but, uh, if you can get the future India ink water mix, I'll, and I, I'll try and get the ratio, uh, well, but you really want to be light on the ink, um, no matter what, what it is. Cause it's, it's very, very, very dark. Um, but also since there are inks out there of different colors, particularly that gray ink that I saw, I, I thought, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to check that out. Uh, cause that could give that kind of general wash because Maybe this is a bit of a, se a segue into this. A lot of the weathering that I've done so far are almost like individual models. And, you know, it works with individual models or even if you're doing up to five. But what happens if you've got a unit train of 100 cars? Could happen. Won't happen on my layout, but it certainly could happen. And um, how do you weather a whole lot of cars quickly? And because usually, I think one of the ways to, to get around around this is that you almost want kind of one signature car for every for every five. Uh, if, if you're looking at a unit train, one that kind of stands out from the, from the others, and that gives you your visual interest as as it's going along. But you still need to weather in some way, shape, or form the you know if you're doing one out of twenty, you still have to weather the other uh, the other twenty to um, or one out of every five. Um, you still probably should uh, should do something there. Otherwise, they just look like plastic models kind of going around. And that's where these weathering washes, uh, in terms of general washes, are uh, probably a, a good idea. So I, I think I'm definitely going to do general washes as, as an upcoming video. I'm going to put that down. Um, and I can actually, uh, I have a couple of my own cars that I can experiment on. And I can, I'll experiment on camera and see, and see what... Um, see what ones work best, especially if you're doing kind of a broad and fast one. And I'll not only show them when they're wet, but also what they look like after they dry. And I think that's that's an important uh, an important part of that. So uh, what I wanted to do now, uh, just uh, just briefly, because we've kind of been at this for 20 uh, for 20 minutes, I, I wanted to talk about some of the different uh, resources um, that that I've I've made use of. Uh, before before I get get into that, are are there? Um, 
the the yes um and and of course um er, as eric mentioned doing a a lot of cars just just with dull coat is is a good idea sometimes if you do it if you, if you get the wash right and you get a wash and then hit it with dull coat it it, it does look uh, quite quite well um but anyway I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about um some uh some weathering resources like are 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 there any books or the like that any any of you have kind of checked out that uh, um, that have helped you in your weathering process uh, at this point? I mean, there's books, there's internet resources. Of course, I you know I plan on be, uh, I'm trying to be trying to be one of them. Okay, thanks, Eric. We'll, we will uh, we will see you later. Um, uh, safe drive. So uh, in in terms of some of uh, some of the uh, some of the book resources, just just put them over in uh, over in chat, and I'll kind of come back to it. But I wanted to highlight a couple of a couple of books for for myself, uh, including one that genuinely uh, the genuinely changed the way that I paint. But these are not model railroading books. Um, well, I do have in this list. I have one out of. Uh, I've got four that I'm going to make recommendations on. One of them is a model railroading book. The rest of them aren't. And part of this, I, I think, we tend to stick in our own silos a little uh, too too often. That there there are things that aircraft modelers are doing that can relate to uh, to. Um, uh, there are things that aircraft modelers are doing that that can uh, help us with model railroading. There are things that military modelers are, are doing, sci-fi modelers, all, all kinds of things that that are out there. And so, this one this one kind of displays my background. Prior to coming back to model railroading, my primary painting and modeling hobby was actually with um, uh, tabletop war games, largely uh, War uh, Warhammer, Warhammer Forty Thousand, actually Warhammer Forty Thousand more than the other, and uh, as well as uh, the uh, World War Two game uh, called Flames of War. Um, now, Games Workshop has a subdivision that does specifically resin. Lar fairly larger models, and uh, uh, it's called Forge World. And in 2008, they put out a book called Imperial Armor Model Masterclass. This book, this book, introduced me to the world beyond the simple Games Workshop paints that I was uh, that I that I was using. And I mean, at this point in time, I had already won a few awards for some of the painting that uh, that I've done. Uh, if you've ever heard of a golden demon, I had won that uh, one one back in in 2002. But I'd always looked at uh, ways to make the models look more and more realistic, even though I'm dealing with a not like a completely fictional setting. How to make them look more realistic? And um, the the this one uh, in particular because it not it introduced me to the styles of military. Uh, military modeling and in fact not only do i have it there i actually have it you know uh, it's just to prove that i'm not just kind of putting something on the screen and this one uh started off by putting um i'll just show you one or two one or two of the pages although i think in order to do this i need to uh, uh just put this over to a broader frame so that it, so that you can actually see this but um uh, what it did is got it basically here's an uh sort of the tools that you can use for painting and weathering and it describes everything in detail uh, on one or two uh, one or two pages and this opened up my world it was this book that inspired me to actually invest in an airbrush um, and it really changed my um really uh changed the way that i uh, that i paint uh, in in fact i i had actually hoped to get a picture of the last model that i had painted prior to getting the book and the first model that i had painted after getting the book uh unfortunately i, I didn't have quite enough time to to pull up those pictures from my archive and 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 do it and do it that way um but so i highly recommend imperial armor model masterclass of and now this is imperial armor model masterclass and it's it's volume one and this shows techniques of not not only is it, the neat thing was it was using paints i was already familiar with but then it expanded it into things like tamiya paints uh weather weathering pigments using oil uh using oils and this book introduced me to the hairspray technique and as i found out one of the authors of this book is phil stutkins's i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right 
but he's the guy who actually pioneered the hairspray technique that the military modelers are, are using uh, all the time now. Uh, and I do plan on demonstrating that, uh, that one in a, in a future uh, in a future video because it can get some highly realistic results. Um, now, companion to this book, of course, um, the the one of the things that we that, that I can, that I can talk about uh, is there's also a Imperial Armor Model Master Class Volume uh, Volume Two, and I this one if you're to, if you're only going to get one of these, um, and I do have links for them down below, but if you're only going to get one of these, get Volume One, but Volume Two is very good, uh, and and so that th this book I I do. Um, I do really recommend uh, as 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 well. One of the benefits to this particular book is between the publication of Volume One and Volume Two, Forge uh, Forge World actually put out their own line of weathering pigments. So there's a section in the back of this that tells you all the different types, different kinds of ways that you can actually use weathering weathering pigments. And as as you've noticed, um, I've uh, not made use of them in any of the videos so far because I do regard them as a fairly uh, as an intermediate to advanced uh, technique because they li weathering pigments or powders or chalks. Uh, what they are is they are the raw pigment without any sort of uh, binder or medium to have them stick stick to the model, and so as a result they're a little harder to manipulate. But this book, this book, tells you exactly uh, how uh, how to do that, and uh, I, so that's that's the value of, of getting volume volume two. But if you want to get uh, volume volume one is. Uh, if you have to choose between the two, look for look for volume one. But volume two is is cert certainly available, and I think it it may actually be more available. So uh, I I have I have two uh, two more. Uh, Two more to recommend, but uh, just going to pause there for 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 a second and just kind of go uh, gonna pop back over uh, in into uh, into the chat, and um, the so uh, so Mike, you you're getting like uh, the pictures on the railroad archives. Absolutely, when you're looking at what you're trying to replicate, it is far and away the best resource uh, that that I that I have. Oh, back following some technical difficulties. Well, welcome, welcome back. The um, and uh, so um, yeah, and and some of the you know let let's be honest. Some of the some of the uh, the Kalmbach books because they deal specifically with model railroading is is kind of a good place to start. You know, my hope my hope is to kind of expand uh, expand your horizons uh, on on that. And uh, yeah, I mean, Lance Lance Midheim's uh, stuff is is really um, really really good. And yes, in terms in terms of color, uh, oddly enough, that reminds me uh, when I did the weathering black cars uh, video just a, a few weeks back. Um, Ron Marsh had suggested that I do a companion one with regard to red, uh, because red is also a difficult co color to to do. And he's uh, he's right because red can either go dark. It can fade to pink. It can go peach. It really depends on almost what the original paint was. And so I've seen, uh, can, uh, and I mean, the fortunate thing is I happen to live in the town that is the headquarters for the Canadian Pacific Railway uh, here in Calgary. And they've got lots of locomotives down at Aleth Yard. And I can take a, picture, uh, take a picture of several in a row where you can see all the different versions of red. So that's probably going to be a source for... Uh, for a video coming coming up at that point, um, but with uh, having some uh, having some videos with uh, with that is uh, I'll I'll try and try and do that. Um, so so pay attention to uh, to some of these recommendations in uh, in chat um, that uh, we have um, model railroading as as art by Lance Mindheim. Uh, the I don't have it, but um, I'm very familiar with uh, Lance's. With Lance's work, um, I'm just trying to see if I might have uh, missed any uh, anything else uh, for for some of the uh, some of the other uh, other ones. Now, here's another one. This is also a, a military modeling one, and uh, now, curiously enough, this one is called FAQ Two or FAQ Two um, by Mig Jimenez, and this is the guy who found who effectively founded Ammo by Mig helped AK Interactive, which this is published by, uh, 
a great a great deal. I can't remember if he actually helped found it as well. And now he runs a company called uh, Ammo by Mig, uh, or Ammo by Mig Jimenez. And um, uh, this is uh, fact too. Uh, like he also put out one the the original one that was uh, simply called uh, uh, it was called AFE Armor Fighting Vehicle. FAQ and uh, uh, Miggy Man is 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 a, a Spanish uh, artist who does uh, models of all different kinds, and um, uh, and and that and that and that kind of and that kind of thing. Um, so very much the I do recommend this. Although curiously enough, in the links below, this one seems to be not currently available, but the original one that he did. Uh, is is available and you can see that see that in in the links below um i want to move back to chat because there was a question that uh, that just came uh, came up do i uh do i weather uh do i only weather locos and cars or uh do i also do buildings yes in fact i do buildings in fact uh you know what hang on uh if you uh allow for just a quick pause i will be back with one of my buildings Okay, and I'm gonna move this to um, to a wider frame so that you can see this. This is a grain elevator that I uh, that I did for. Uh, I have a module um, for uh, my, for my N scale club, and as you can see, this is a grain elevator that uh, that I made. It's obviously N, uh, N scale, and it's intended to fit in the module. But because of transportation purposes and the like, uh, it's intended to just kind of sit in uh, in into the module uh, it, itself. But this is the kit bash um, of a. Um, you can see this is a, a, a Rick's um, grain bin. Uh, this is the top of a Rick's grain elevator, but this is a, the center part here is a Walther's kit, and underneath uh, here, um, and you can see this is also uh, some of the parts of the, the Walther's kit as well. And then this part here, it was the warehouse of the Walther's kit, but I uh, basically extended up the frame. I used the roof of, of the warehouse, but this is actually based on the shape of a grain elevator in uh, uh, Chapel, Saskatchewan, and um, uh, and if now I don't know if you can see this, but if you look really carefully underneath this white patch here, um, there you can see the original logo of the Saskatchewan wheat pool underneath the logo, and I actually put a decal there and then painted over it to kind of get that that weathered look. Uh, so yes, in answer to your question, I weather everything. Um, and uh, buildings included. Um, this one, if I do a video on it, it's just going to be pan and shoot. It, I don't. I have some in progress still pictures of having done this, but I don't have any video of, of this because I, I did this more than a year ago. And uh, so, uh, but as you can see, yes. Um, and actually, I also use the hairspray technique on this to kind of get that uh, that worn paint uh, on on it. So, um, so yes. Even the techniques that I've learned from uh, from those those resource books and uh, weathering, I do apply uh, I do apply to models. So anyway, so there there you go. There's one side, and then the other, and then one side. By the way, Fanning is my wife's last name, um, and uh, this she had uh, lived in Saskatchewan for about uh, for about a year uh, as um, as part of her studies, and uh, the so when we did, were deciding on what to do the, for the first module for the club that I'm a part of, she had suggested of doing some place that she had actually been. So we based this grain elevator. Uh, it's actually a composite of three different. Um, uh, three different grain elevators in uh, in Saskatchewan. So oh, I'm glad glad to show it. I you know uh, the 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 thing is I I had uh, it, it didn't even occur to me and I realized you know it's just in the stairwell there because that's actually where I where I keep the uh, keep the module. There's no way I'm hauling that module up well on a live feed. But this this was easy to do. So uh, and just kind of kind of do that do that. I do have uh, if you look at the video uh, the live video feed from uh, Railway Days in in my um, 
uh, uh, in in some of my previous videos, at, at live steam at, at Heritage Park, there's a brief scene that actually has some trains running past my module, and you get to see this actual model uh, in in action. It's just a, it's very brief, but it's almost like a little Easter egg that you can go you can go and find. So. The yeah um yeah um and uh, so so yes the um uh, as I said uh, fanning uh, fanning is is like there's fanning there um, whoops let's do this in in the revised colors but if you look uh, if you look really carefully here you can see not only fanning here but the uh, the it's bleeding through the the, the cover. And then it said, does say Saskatchewan up there. I don't know if you can actually, uh, let's get this real close. You can see the Saskatchewan and then the, uh, and the rust and the rust streaks coming down from the windows. So there you go. Hey, Jerry, good to see you. So, uh, so anyway, uh, for, uh, hopefully you can catch some, some of this in, in, uh, in, in re uh, in replay, but uh, you can see that one just sort of in the background as trains are going by in in the one in the one video. Um, so and uh, and uh, Tom, yeah, it, like it, it was really fun to do that because it, it, it shows that you can actually weather over top of of uh, any sort of decal work. And uh, yeah, that's how I see it. But anyway, that's 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 where we go. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna pop this back i'm going to pop this back over to the live chat frame um, um and i i had i had mentioned of course uh miggy min is uh the um uh in terms of his resources uh but i just want to share this one with uh with you uh this is a this is a work by uh tom mann and it was uh, published i think in two uh, about 2009 and uh, this one is available. Uh, I think it's available on Amazon. I think there's some places you can find it as as an ebook. And uh, I became familiar with uh, Tom Mann's stuff. I, actually, what I have here is is um, a I, I did purchase this back in 2006, and this was um, it, it says uh, realistic weathering for end scale model railroads uh, getting getting grunge. But it's a series of tutorials by by uh, by Tom Mann, and some of the this material here and uh, ended up in in this book um and uh, so so i uh, you know i i found found this in my own my own personal archives i don't have the digital copy of, of this uh, any anymore but uh, it was very uh, a very helpful uh, resource so uh, of course uh so as a result, that th this one is is definitely a good one to uh, a good one to consider. So, all right, gonna head back over into uh, into chat. Um, the uh, yeah, so 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 Tom, the um, uh, the the grain elevator that this was based on, if if you didn't catch before, was based on one in Chaplin, Saskatchewan, which is right along the Trans Canada Highway, I think between Swift Current and Moose Jaw. I think, um, but there's amazing things you can do with Google Earth. I, that's another great resource for weathering and buildings. Google Earth, because of that little car that goes around, for the most part, uh, you can actually get down on the side. And, and this tiny little town in Saskatchewan that sports this elevator has all the little roads ma mapped out, and you can actually drive up to the other. Uh, so I was able to see uh, the elevator from this side. Um, which worked out really, really nicely. Okay, so um, the I'm just gonna kind of pop uh, pop this uh, this back out. Um, I, I do happen to have uh, I, I am on Twitter, although, although really it's it's linked uh, to uh, it's linked to my face my Facebook group, um, but it's 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 a good way. Um, it's a, it's a good way to do that, um, and sort of all the things that I've that I've that I've uh, that I've talked about are are actually in the description down uh, down below uh, as ways that 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 you can uh, kind of get access to some of these uh, resources. As I mentioned, something you want, something you need, something to wear, something that you read. I don't have swag yet, 
but I can cover all the, the other the other three bases as 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 far as as far as this is concerned. Now, uh, this is also, of course, has been a, a general uh, a general Q and A, and uh, so it, the. Um, do we have any other uh, any other questions out there? I, I just want to kind of look back up in uh, in chat to see if there might have been uh, anything uh, anything that I that I might have missed. Um, but uh, if if you haven't, uh, let's see. Just kind of scrolling back uh, scrolling back up to make sure. You no, know, the I don't I don't have nearly as many uh, many people in 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 chat as uh, the as as say uh, Steve or um, uh, Steve or Ron, Rondu, but uh, at the same time, I understand how it can be a bit of a challenge to keep up with this. Oh, oh so what, what am I using? Um, what am I using as a camera uh, for, for shooting the videos, Gerald? Is, is, that, uh, is that what you're asking? Oh, DC, uh, DC UK, uh, or, um, actually I have used Woodland Scenics deep pour water on the very module that this thing is sitting on. So I've used their water. I know how, I do know how to use it. So I, I, I can actually do that. And I even have video of, way, uh, of, of pouring the stuff. So anyway, um, Okay, so uh, Jerry, the what I'm using is a, is my wife's uh, digital SLR, SLR camera. It's a Sony uh, SLT uh, Alpha A55, um, and I'm at that point I'm using just the standard kit lens for it. But I, I have switched lenses back back and forth, and um, the uh, and and so so yes, the um, uh, the it it works well, but. At the same time, I also learned that my microphone and that camera don't work very well. So someone actually gave me this this little uh, this little recorder, and so I'm not only using it to to record and sync the sound, uh, but I'm also having a chance to um, uh, th th this gives a chance to actually uh, do uh, some uh, some decent recording with uh, with that. So that that that's quite helpful. Somebody actually gave me this. I feel very lucky for uh, for that because. Um, to buy it new is probably a little out of my budget. Um, so uh, DCK UK, uh, yes, please send uh, send me the questions with regard to the uh, to the water because I that's uh, that is certainly a potential video. Going to write that down um, uh, because I do have footage on it. It's just it's just a matter of uh, constructing it, and unfortunately the audio for that isn't all that good. So I, I'm probably going to have to do a, a voice overlay f uh, for it. So what is my favorite thing to weather? Oh, that's a good question. Um, oh, the, um, well, I, I, I have to say that when I did the down and dirty weathering contest, I really liked working on those gondolas. Now, it so happened that my planned layout has a uh, need for some gondolas, but only really about two or three. Uh, maybe uh, maybe as many as uh, as four because it, it's just a small industry going to be represented. So I'm almost at my limit of the the gondolas that I, that I can use. Um, the um, oh, you have a show layout to finish. Um, in fact, some of the structures you're going to see me working on is uh, the club that I'm a part of uh, has redone a couple of a couple of modules, and guess who they've gotten to paint them. Um, or, or at least the, the the buildings and some of the the rolling stock. So um, uh, anyway, the so uh, the we'll we'll see you later, uh, DC, DC UK. Uh, UK. Um, I'm I'm just thinking, uh, but yeah, pop those questions with regard to the woodland scenic water. Uh, I've had great success with their new deep pour water. Um, and I can tell you a story of a not so successful using their real estate water. They're two totally different things. Um, and, uh, I, th I think I've even got pictures of, 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 of the disaster, uh, that, that we, we ended up fixing using deep pour water. Um, and this was on one of the club, club modules as well. Um, so I guess favorite things to weather, uh, really in, t in terms of, uh, you know what, boxcars are, are, a, are a good standard. In, in fact, um, what I'm working on right now are a couple of, uh, deep, 
um, uh, Husky stacks uh, for the painting and uh, using uh, painting and decals right from undecorated. Uh, someone earlier said uh, that they, they're really interested in painting an undecorated locomotive. Uh, I, I do... Um, in, in fact, I do actually have an undecorated locomotive. Again, this is a club one that, that I that I need to do for the club. Seems that they've kind of given me a number of things to do. And um, the, the so, I mean, locomotives are fun, although the one that I'm doing for the club, I don't think they want it weathered too heavily. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so, uh, actually, that's why I have water. Uh, but I, I think I'm going to be doing um, uh, doing some more uh, doing some more of that. Um, oh yeah, uh, don't forget to hit the uh, the like uh, that like button. Um, and um, uh, now I assume most of you have probably uh, probably subscribed. So, so can I describe uh, to, uh, how I weathered the the fanning gra uh, grain elevator? Uh, yeah, it, it, well. You know, one of the things that uh, I'd like to do it on a, I, I could probably do it in a video because I did take pictures of, of it. Um, and one of the things uh, in doing it, I used the, I did use the hairspray technique as part of it because I, I sprayed, uh, I primed it uh, with, with black. Uh, J Jerry, Jerry's going to, uh, Jerry's going to like this. I, I used um, a lot in the way of um, Games Workshop paints for, for, for that one. And uh, their Games Workshop black, uh, Chaos Black Primer, uh, which you're going to see me use in a, in a couple videos uh, anyway. Um, sprayed the whole thing, uh, the whole thing black. Uh, um, I kept the, uh, the, um, like, I built this, this part. I actually kept the grain elevator, uh, or, or, sorry, the, um, the actual, this bin, off, uh, off of it, along with the, uh, and I built this separate, uh, separately, and I actually used magnets to kind of hold um, the, to hold it in place. And uh, now I've since glued it in place, but this, these are actually held in place by rare earth magnets to get the, uh, to get the positioning right. Uh, so I actually painted this whole thing separately because, because uh, even on, uh, you can't really see it, but on, on the side here, there is also a fanning and a, a logo, a logo there. So I paint, I actually then uh, airbrushed the whole, th uh, most of it gray. Um, and then I used the hairspray technique to, uh, to make it so that when I painted the white over top of it, I, I would then, then I would then end up removing some, some of that. I then applied the uh, Alberta wheat pool decals and the Saskatchewan and all that. And those, those decals, I, I actually, uh, I, I actually made myself on Photoshop and uh, printed, printed them off on, on we have a photo, photo printer here. Uh, Tester's decal paper, uh, it, isn't the, it isn't the best, but it, it did what I wanted, wanted it to do. It's also the same thing that the Viterra logo is. But I had to use a lot of decal solvent to get it to, to lie flat. And, and then, then I started applying weathering effects and... Uh, uh, over top of that, doing the the particularly with with these with these logos, uh, you know, with these uh, the lettering here, is actually applying paint uh, over that in in a way that it it fades out because that that started out as really quite a bright red, and uh, and and so I had to 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 constantly uh, kind of gently fade a faded black. I think I may have even uh, used a little bit of really fine grit sandpaper once it was all sealed in to kind to kind of uh, to kind of break it up a little uh, a little bit as well. But you got to be really careful of that. You almost have to have it sealed in first before you do that because you could accidentally just rip the whole decal off if if you if you do that. Um, but so that's one of the one of the ways that uh, that I uh, that I did that. And then then uh, once it came time to you know I covered up this logo and then I uh, then I did these these patches and then applied the new Viterra logo. Um, Viterra is a, a company here that the Alberta or the Alberta and Saskatchewan wheat pools eventually became. Um, I'm not quite sure of, of the history itself, but uh, and then then I just kind of added added that back in and then re-added fanning here and then on the rail side uh, fanning fanning there. 
Um, and uh, it, as you can see, I also did did some patches there. Although curiously enough, those patches were almost out of necessity because the hairspray technique worked too well here and here. So I had to kind of fix it. Uh, also, uh, uh, let's see if we can show you the roof here. Um, I also use the hairspray technique in a couple of a couple of different ways, um, just up here to kind of get that um, in, in layers. But the one thing is, don't be afraid to use layers and just doing a lot of clear coats in between to kind of protect your work. <sighs> so Jerry, you're asking about uh, steam locomotives. I would love to do a steam locomotive. I will take a commission on a steam locomotive. I don't have a steam locomotive, uh, so, so that you know that's something that I, I really wanted to get a chance to, to be able to be able to to do. Um, so uh, anyway, I, the the I, I hadn't actually expected to br to bring out the uh, the green elevator, but I, I'm I'm glad that uh, that that you mentioned it to to, br to bring it out. Uh, do we have any now um, the ATS Ventus Spur is is your name's Tom, is it? Um, Tom, did, did I answer your question with regard to that just in this short time? I think it really deserves its own, its own video, uh, but it's going to be a lot of stills with pan and zoom ki kind of thing, as opposed to actually showing, uh, showing my, my hands actually on it. Um, so, uh, so any others, uh, any others at, at, uh, at, at this point, um, you know, earlier we were, we were talking about uh, talking about washes. Um, the, I'm also keeping an eye on the time because uh, Eric uh, Hall had to leave a little earlier, and um, uh, he was my only moderator. Um, and uh, so, and he's been putting in links that that I think I think were uh, very very good. So, um, but yeah, I I do actually have a step by step of of how I actually built it but only in photographs uh, but that's easily enough uh, translated in, into, uh, into into a video and maybe that's something that you can see uh, coming coming this year and uh, yeah please please do hit uh, hit the like button um, uh, and uh, you know, there's 16 of you uh, out there and lots of chat kind of flowing through here let's bring that bring that chat window back uh, back up because um, I'm, I'm I'm pretty pretty happy with that um, and uh, so, the again, thank you, thank you very, very much for uh, for. Uh, I've gotten a couple of new subscribers as we've been as we've been ta talking. Uh, again, thank you, thank you. So I, I guess the, I guess the question is, um, I may be able to release a video next week. I may not. Uh, here's my little my little secret: is that I share the same real life position or job as Ron Marsh, uh, just the same job i'm i'm a minister at, at at a church but different denomination up up here and so as a result christmas is really 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 busy for me and uh, so i may not be able to get a video out and uh next next week i'm um so that's one of the reasons why i'm doing a live chat uh, this week and i i expect i'll probably do maybe live chats about once a month that's kind of what i'm anticipating um the uh, but we can um, uh, we we can cer certainly uh, certainly do this, but also realizing that uh, my daughter is going to be getting home from school soon. It was her thirteenth birthday yesterday, and my four year old son has to be picked up from daycare. And then we're going with my in laws to supper tonight. And so uh, I do have to get um, uh, the. Um, uh, I, I do I do have to to get uh, to get ready and um, uh, for for that. So again, thank you thank you very much for uh, for t for tuning in and to everybody who's watching the the live uh, this on on replay. Uh, again, thank you very much for 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 tuning in. Uh, again, just as a, a reminder, just kind of check out the description below. Um, there's some links down there that you might uh, you might find uh, helpful. Uh, now, full full disclosure is that if you click on the Link and buy something through there. I do actually get a commission, um, but you know the, these days, and the commission's not not uh, not that great. But on the other hand, if, speaking of commissions, if you're interested in me actually weathering something of yours uh, and actually doing a video of how I did it as as a tutorial, that that's an option that that can come because. Uh, 
I do have an end scale layout. I do have my own end scale stuff, but it's small. It's a 36 by 80 door that I may be able to expand into a shelf around. Uh, but that means that sooner or later, I'm going to actually run out of my own stuff. And and uh, particularly if there's things that you want to see me see me do, um, would it be I you know I have no call for a Union Pacific locomotive on my layout, for example. But I would love the chance because uh, yellow and gray and red is uh, has a real uh, opportunity to to do something neat with that. Uh, perhaps some of the uh, the war bonnets. Um, all the, all that kind of stuff. So it just kind of gives me a, a chance to maybe work on something, uh, something a little a little different. So uh, so with that, um, the I'm just going to see if there's any other uh, any other questions um, uh, with uh, with regard to that. So. Um, well, yeah, you're going to see me after, the, uh, certainly see me after the new year. And like the reality is I am almost ready to do the first of the painting videos. In in fact, I, I just have one, one more bit of B-roll footage to actually film. And then I, and then I can actually, and then I can actually film it. However, I've got a lot of th things to, uh, to do in, 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 in the meantime. So, uh, so I will be taking a, a leave for about uh, for about two weeks, but uh, I'll, I'll try and keep things engaged. And who knows? I might even flip on the uh, flip on the live stream uh, between uh, now and now and Christmas. But uh, I greatly appreciate your questions, and I'm I'm going to go back through once the live chat uh, goes up, and um, and uh, so we can um, so we can get a chance to um, uh, to the. Um, uh, the, um, <clears throat> and I'll, and I'll get a chance and I'll, I'll bleh, sorry, just tongue tied. If you notice, one of the reasons why my videos jump cut a lot is that I tend to, even though I'm a public speaker and I work with, uh, I, I can speak in public and that kind of thing. I do tend to stammer and do ums a lot and it's embarrassing. And so I want to just kind of make those. And, and unfortunately people will lose their attention if that keeps going. So that's why I do, I tend to do a lot of jump cuts in the video. And it, if I do it intentionally, it makes it a little, a little bit easier. So anyway, yes, derailed my train of thought. It does, it does happen. So, uh, Merry Christmas or whatever, uh, holidays you happen to be celebrating this, uh, this time of year. And again, thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much for, uh, for being a part of the, the live chat today. This is a, a great, uh, first official, even though this is, this is my second one. Uh, again, thank you so much for, for being a part of it, for tuning in, for coming in and, uh, and being, being able to, uh, to watch this and, um, uh, I, again, also to thank you to uh, to everybody in ch in chat for all of your uh, all of your comments. Uh, I'm gonna go back and and review them. And also, if there's any comments that you have beyond chat, uh, and especially suggestions and things like that, please put them in the in the uh, the comments section down below. Uh, and of course, for those of you who are tuning into the live chat and didn't get a chance to, that's a good place to also just comment uh, and and uh, check out the description uh, below and will uh, will be good to go so um again thank you thank you very much and for those of you who've been tuning in all the way from uh points east of the atlantic and i'm looking at you especially robin thank you for tuning in i realize that it's very late for you and uh, so so again th thank you very much and good luck and may you keep on track